Okay, so, Courtney. Yes, sir. So this BMF show is popping, and a lot of the world is getting exposed to hearing about uh, something very well-known and infamous to hear us in Detroit, YBI Young Boys Incorporated. And I've done a lot of pieces on them, and people can look at that stuff. But let's go to, let's, let's talk about that stuff with you. So there's a lot <laughs> in that can of worms. Yeah. But me and you did a story a couple years back. I have it listed on my YouTube as 35 years in prison, and it's about a young, well, not a young man now. He's in his 50s, he's been in prison 37 years, he went to prison at like 19, Spencer Holloway. Give us a little, recap us on that, and who he was, and what was going on with YBI and him, but then now let's talk about the fact that maybe he, maybe protected you from a kidnapping to some extent, or, or your thoughts on that whole situation. Um, okay, so first, yes, yeah, shout out to Spencer Holloway. Um, free that guy. Free, free Spencer. Only one still incarcerated from that YBI era. Yeah, you know, shit. Guard is out. Everybody. Most didn't went in and went out. Multiple times. Multiple I mean, times. There's people in for fresh. For, for, right, right, right. But don't for some from shit. From the YBI crimes, he's the only one. Yeah, so he, he's done his day, paid his debt since 85. Since 85. Um, so, you know, he grew up uh, next door neighbors to me and Eddie Jr. Or not next door neighbors, but literally four houses. In a very high end suburb. Northland Gardens at the time, one of the most affluent suburbs, subdivisions of the suburbs in all of America, right? Motown elite and all of that. Um, and home of many uh, kingpins of that era. Uh, Eddie Jackson, my father, Courtney Brown, Leroy Clanton, Frank Nitty Usher, just to name a few, Richard Wakefield, all. Um, Residents of Southfield in the early 70s. So, Spencer grew up um, Elmhurst, Richardson, one of those streets. Richardson, Elmhurst. He was entrenched. He had went to, um, what's the elementary school all those guys oh, went to? Winter, uh, Halter. Winter Halter. They all went to Winter Halter. So, everybody who would become infamous or famous, uh, whether it's the People Brothers, Raymond and Timmy, R.I.P. Raymond, um, everybody, have all of them. Tracy, everybody, Brett, Steve, all those guys all went to school together, grade school together. And um, oh, and Longfellow. Longfellow, right. In Winter Hall. But Winter, Winter Hall in particular. Oh, right. I think they all were at Winter Hall too. Um, so Spencer moved to Southfield probably uh, mid to late 70s. So he would have been early teens? I think Spencer got to 12. Spencer got to Letterly, the middle school in Southfield. Um, but Spencer was in my year, so I'm class eight. He in like seventh grade. So how old so are you? He was like twelve or something. Thirteen, so maybe eighth grade. Seventh? No, like seventh grade. Spencer how did his family afford to be living? It was just him and his mother. It was just him and his mother. Um, she had a great job at AT and T. Um, so black upper middle class. Black from, upper middle from class. Being part of the corporate structure. Corporate structure, family, um, like stepdad. I, they knew some people too. They they knew people. Um, so, but yeah, she worked. Miss Holloway worked. Shout out to Miss Holloway. Um, they got out there, but again, he grew up. So, like the first person that I had ever heard say the name YBI or Young Boys Incorporated was Spencer Holloway. Because he'd go back to the old neighborhood and uh, he'd come back and be like, man, they're getting money. Why be I this? Why be I that? You know, and then to kind of fast forward the story as we get older. So now we're talking 81, 82, 81, I would say probably for sure, for sure. By this time, Spencer's actually starting to spend time with uh, Maurice. Bell, uh, I think that was Mo's last name. Anyway, uh, Butch's nephew, um, Bunyan, a lot, yeah, a lot of the names. He, he's becoming real in, entrenched with this kind of situation. So, um, which is fine, and uh, you know, again, there was no, no, no thing, thing, thing. Um, he, he was his friends were getting money. About now, you're talking. 82-ish, 83-ish, the light is at the end of the tunnel for Eddie's father to come home and my father to come home. Well, we think they're about to be home, but 
Go ahead. You got just it. to refresh people, if again, if you're not from here and your knowledge of this is from the BMF Star Show, in the beginning they say when we grew up we wanted to be like YBI. Right. So this 81, 82, 83, YBI is on the cover of the, they're public enemy number one. They, they don't really can, they aren't really the biggest drug dealers in Detroit, but they're the face of Crime and drug dealing, at least as far as the media. Yeah, well, they were getting the bag from some of the biggest. No, drug they dealers. were a big deal. I mean, <laughs> they didn't like run the whole city. No, no, no. They were. There was a. Re they were a retail operation, yes. to be honest. But they, they were a big deal. They were a very yeah, big. And deal. in the media, they were the biggest deal. And you know, because they were producing teenage millionaires. That that that's like factual. Yeah. You had eighteen. So with that, the fact that this click out of Dexter, these young guys from Winter Alter were creating multiple teenage millionaires, Spencer, to be honest, he was caught up, you know, and now we speak to each other, you know, which has been one of the good things about that post you did a couple years ago. It actually led, because um, I hadn't spoke to Spencer for years, it actually led. Because you kind of parted on bad terms. So, right, to kind of fast forward to the story, um, Spencer's become very aligned with you know, those who don't know the story, YBI kind of split off into two sections. There was kind of the uh, Butch Jones loyalist clique, shall we say. And then there were other remnants of people who had um, either stopped doing business with Butch Jones um, or just went their own way. So one of the more... One of the more famous guys who kind of went their own way, um, who had also hustled with, you know, Raymond Peoples and um, WW, uh, read his books. Shout out to James Cooper, a.k.a. Pep. What's happening, man? You need to be here on the mic, too, but we're going to let that go for right now. Read his book. Um, uh, Bound by Honor, Torn by Greed. Bound by Honor, Torn by Greed. Um, story of James Cooper, Pep. So... Really, really weird nexus. Another guy from that neighborhood, Tracy Sledge, a.k.a. Jabba the Hutt. Oh, Shout out to a, the Oh, here's we're going to flash that famous picture I've used many times of Pep in Boston. Was that Pep in Boston with the kid with the money? Or I was think. That that's Pep. That's Pep, and I, I don't. from Boston. That was the kid from, from Boston, Boston, but it should, I think it was right there on the block. No, no, that was in Boston. Was that in Boston? That was their crew in Boston. Okay, so. so they had right. gone to Boston. WW had turned, took, took him to Boston. Later, he would take. One of the first bag, no, the first bag he got from Eddie. Oh. He took to Boston. Oh. And you he know. Went to Seattle too at one point. Pep was a yeah. Well, so no, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Um. So, Butch and Pep fall out as the story has been told numerous, numerous times. Basically, when Pep didn't want to work for Butch anymore, Butch gave him an ultimatum. You know, you got to give me back. He was doing that. You know, should night shit. You got to give me back my chain. All the shit that you made hustling for me, you got to check that in if you don't want to hustle for me no more. Well, Pep refuses to go along with this. It's like, no, fuck that, right? So that leads to, you know, the <laughs> one thing they say about the guy, he, you know, he, he, he led and ran by intimidation and fear. And he was older than everybody. It was way older than everybody. I he mean, was so, mid-20s, they were 18. For, for them kids over there, he was the boogeyman. Because he had been to prison for murder. He had been to prison for murder. Again, a teenage kid. So he was the boogeyman. He wasn't the boogeyman for grown men because, you know, it's Detroit. It ain't nobody who can't get it. Yeah. You know, but if you 17 impressionable and you hearing all this shit. And he was a very dangerous person. And he was. Oh, for, for real, for real. Yeah. yeah so. He's doing time for a couple extortion murders now. He would later on do some kidnapping torture. and torture and shit like that. In the 90s. Which is what leads to this. This antidote we going through now. So Pep won't give him back the shit that he didn't earn. He puts a bounty on Pep's head. How much? I don't know. You know. But it was real. It, it was. was real. It, oh, it, oh, yeah. Because they started taking. They, was they was killing people and they started coming at coming at him through the smallness of the world across the street from Pep. Live a guy named Tracy Sledge, Jabba the Hutt. Tr Tracy is dating Eddie Jackson's. Junior's auntie. Oh, that's how you were connected. That's how we oh, connected, right? It was like family. Like family. So was me and Eddie coming up, Tracy always Leslie around. Leslie. Oh, Leslie. Okay. Yeah. Um, Leslie and Dexter? One block off Dexter. Oh, okay. 
One block from Esquire. One block from Esquire. Is that, Between the, is that one of the nice It's a gorgeous street. Okay. Gorgeous sure street. There is that area. Russell, that's like the heart Russell of Russell Woods. Woods. Okay. Yeah, they right between, yeah. That, that. Which is a very, still to this day, the blacks are you, nice in the middle of some real You go area. down, still, you go down any of them streets. Oh, off million Broadway. dollar homes in any other city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now, these kids wasn't poor and destitute at all. They no houses were nice brick, solid, working big, class, big. big. Well, they weren't built for working class. Those were probably built for upper middle class when they were Yeah, Yeah, because at one time, you know, I was a heavily wealthy Jewish, Jewish, wealthy wealthy Jewish yeah. neighbor. That's neighbor. where if you moved off 12th Street to Dexter. Yep, yep, because later that, 50s, that was the central. They all went to central. Later, they would all go to Mumford. Later, they'd all go to Oak Park High. Then West Bloomfield. Then West Bloomfield. And, uh, a brief stop in Southfield. Then West Bloomfield. Followed the middle class West Side. Black well, followed, followed them same. that same pattern. So, Pep and Butch on the outs. Pep won't give him back his shit. Butch trying that strong arm shit. He didn't put out a bounty on his head. Tracy and Pep, cool at the time. Real cool. We cool with Tracy. Eddie Jr. and Tracy and uh, what, the whole crazy story that we can, you know, I, I, a real summation of it. Wayward children, somewhat me and Eddie Jr. are. Um, and I'm like a spectator with a front row seat to this shit because I'm like 18 months older than Eddie Jr. And you've gone away to college. No, nah, this, yet. we ain't, but I, no, we're still in high school. Okay. So as this is all happening, I have driver's license and Eddie You're Jr. You're the first one to get a driver's, driver's license. license. Eddie Jr. doesn't. Which leads to me always having to take him over to Leslie, over to Tracy's house to catch up with his auntie and to catch up with Tracy. So that's how I man Tracy ended up getting cool. Eddie, you know, you got to look at some of the stuff either on Big Boss Filmworks or maybe you have some of it on Your American Dope or even a shout out to Eddie Baby or over at Oh, yeah, uh, he's True got Street. Shout out to Eddie. He's been building a great channel. And um, Real True Street Crime. So I know on there you, you can get the story told, but. To put it in summation, Eddie old man locked up at Milan. He tells his man, shout out to another famous Detroit OG, Treacherous. He tell Eddie baby to hook up with Treacherous and get him a quarter. They, him and my father up there doing some shenanigans. Quarter of hair. It's supposed to be a quarter of weed. Oh, that your father just, or that his father just wants to smoke. Smoke while he's in the joint. But they think it's. They think he want a quarter of jive. H. So. Treacherous, Eddie goes to meet Treacherous, Treacherous, and he's expecting Treacherous to give him a quarter of weed. Treacherous gives him a quarter, a jab, that is better than any shit on the street. So, well, so it wasn't jab at that point. It's, it's it was pure. It was, it was a straight, yeah, top side. So <laughs> you know, we were fucked up. We were fucked up kids. We were products of our environment. So Eddie, I'll give Eddie Jr. the credit for this. So he, he immediately says, huh, Jr., so what are we going to do with this? I'm like, I don't know. But we hear through Tracy about all this Young Boy Incorporated shit going on, right? Another guy who ain't shout out, AK, I think he's passed away, uh, Gene Hackman. Oh, did he die? Gene, I think Gene passed. Because he passed him a few years ago. But if not, AK, anyway. Six, seven years ago. Okay, I think AK, AK yeah, uh, Hacky. Uh, Gene used to always, they always, all of them used to be in Tracy's basement. Rob P. Brett, uh, Gene, all of them. It was like Tracy's basement was a gathering point for the crew. And he like, well, I, I'm going to go see if Tracy can get rid of it. So then the, the, the Eddie Jr. Uh, conspiracy begins. So I'm going to give it to Tracy. Tracy will sell it for us. Then we buy, get Tracy, the guy, this guy, Jerry Hobbs, had a big weed spot right over there that all, all the crews to go to. I'll buy the weed. Oh, and give it to my dad. And give it to my dad. Thing was, this fucking scheme works. So Tracy in cahoots with Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman's running, Maurice is running the bag for Butch and Mo Bell. They packing up the shit that Eddie getting from Treacherous and just sliding it in to the bag. To, into the YBI. to the YBI bag. Thing is, the shit that Eddie Dream was getting from Treacherous was better than the shit they had. So the fiends would be like, whenever they would slide them in, they'd be like, nah, but 
that other bag y'all got. And they be like, what you talking about? Ain't no other bag, ain't no other bag. They like, no, man, this ain't, this ain't what y'all had before. Because it would be hit and miss. Tracy, they'd run through a quarter of the good shit. Which ain't that much. Which well, ain't that much. How much would that break, a pure quarter break into what? Well, they'd probably 20, take it. Or a 30 or 50. Yeah, and if they put a 30 on it. So, so that's 30 quarters. So that's 30 quarters. And how many bundles out of a quarter? Couple. Couple hundred. Oh, out of a quarter? Well, I mean, you got to figure. Quarter seven grams, right? So a tenth. A tenth is a dime, baby. And back then, they was given a straight tenth is a dime. So every 12 70. bundles, 1.2 grams, right? So that's 70. So, but they were putting the $2 on it as top. So let's just say 7 grams is 70 bundles. But that's uncut. So if they put in a 30. Multiply that's that 10. Or that's 2,100. Bundles. 2,100 bags. Bags. 10 bundles. bundles. So that ain't much. Right. Because Tracy, they'd run through that in a day. Because more than them, but you know, he was getting money. That's not 20, that's 20 grand. It was working out well, Eddie Byron, you know, he was, he, he, he took care of his. 70 of his, uh, times 30 is 2,100 $10 bags. So that's $21,000. That's. Tracy so got a. Treacherous just gave him $21,000. We, we go get to the day of reckoning when Eddie old man come home and me and him got to fess up about the shit we've been doing. And you're paying Treacherous back. Nah, treacherous, treacherous wasn't worried about it. That's the kind of, I mean, Eddie, oh man, you got to understand. Now it's legend, but in his day, and you're talking about early 81, his aura and his reputation in the streets, especially among unmatched. unmatched, so, and everybody knew he was about to come home. So they trying to set the stage. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was like, he, he, good, you, for he good for, for real, for real, he good for it. Yeah. And um, so then... That's how, so the, the so trick. you sliding 21,000 worth of dope into the bag. Right, right. It ain't just a little. And Eddie just buying top tens and jewelry. Uh, he, he rewarded me well for my show for services. Uh, Tracy getting his cut. Uh, Gene Hackman getting his cut. Everybody, it, it's, a good, it's a good arrangement, right? Fast forward, Eddie old man get home. So this went out for two years? Two something? years. Oh. Two years. Last two years, they was locked up. Oh, wow. Fast forward, Eddie old man come home. Me and Eddie come in. He's smoking weed. I'm drinking Rinya Needy. Might have been sniffing that shit. I don't know. Anyway, Treacherous is there. And, and Treacherous is Eddie's senior's age. It's a little older. Oh, okay. A little older. Uh, he had worked, you know, worked with him. Um, Treacherous, Treacherous, and another famous guy by the name of Milwaukee Jack was like oh, partner. Oh, Treacherous was down with, with, with Milwaukee Jack. Yeah, they like partner. They like partners. Oh, so okay, Milwaukee Jack for the, he was at the top of the food John Mays. Shows. Yeah, when top did of the food. He stop being on the scene. I mean, as late as last time I heard of Milwaukee Jack was when Eddie Old Man came home. They, oh, they, they hooked. But he was old. Did he die? Or? He was old then. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think he just passed. Was did they call him that because he was from Milwaukee Street or he's from Milwaukee or you know? I think he was literally from city of Milwaukee. The, the city of Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he had been here forever. Forever, okay. forever, forever, forever. So yeah, Church is Milwaukee Jack, like partners. Oh, okay. Um. I was butchering them was getting shit from Treacherous and Milwaukee Jack. Too. Yeah, because, and then my That's DEA what... agent worked Milwaukee Jack. Jack. He put Jack, he bought a couple of eggs from John Mays and put them away around late 70s, or mm -hmm. early 70s. When Milwaukee Jack did some time, it was from Sutton. Yeah, okay, so, Eddie old man didn't come home. I mean, he ain't been home a month. Me and Eddie come in the house from bullshitting. They stay, they stay out in Oak Park now, on Gardner Street. Um, treacherous there. Somehow, me and Eddie went one direction, went downstairs. I'm in the lot. Anyway, the conversation turned, and Treacherous asked Eddie Baby, or his father had already got the news, basically like, so uh, I think Eddie, no, Eddie Senior cuts into Eddie Junior, just on some, you know, some real old school shit. It's like, uh, so I was talking to Treacherous, <laughs> so that's what I had to mess up. You and Junior been with that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, you and Junior, you and Junior been up to some real slick shit. Of course, I kind of, I was like, uh, I just drive. I was just a driver. 
I'm just a driver. I'm just a driver. What year this is eight? This is eight. This is the summer of 1983. So what? So Spencer still is. He's the fallout has not occurred. Some tensions had already started about 82. Uh, you know, I talk about it in that original post. Spencer said some kind of shit. We young testosterone. Um, it ain't it's about it, you're just bragging about what is people on Dexter and them. Yeah, with, about my bar with that, and we basically said when they come on, trust me, this shit, this ain't, this ain't, this. They doing what they doing, but it ain't what you think it is, right? But he caught up. It is what it is. Um, so we, we we are still friends enough that we're stopping by to catch up. In fact, that's how I met those guys, Bunyan and and uh, Avery and Nick. Um, and all of them, I met through Spencer, not through Tracy. Some of the guys I met through Tracy and met Pep and Gene and all them, but like Bunyan and Nick and Avery, I met all them guys through Spencer. Because by 82, the summer of 82, he's hanging tough with them. He's hanging real tough with them. So we still are old time buddies as late as 82. When 83, when the big man gets home, He cut in Eddie, uh, this Eddie treacherous little scam with the weed is all exposed. But, uh, you know, big man kind of like, so, um. Uh, so, just to, just uh -huh. so people clear. So, so, there's so much, you guys have so much access to large amounts of high grade heroin and the people to sell it and protect it and all of that, that what started off as a simple request. By Eddie Jackson to have well, seven quarter, grams of marijuana to smoke okay. yes. in the prison has led to this drug ring that no yes. one even knows about. That drug ring, right, right. That it is getting this doing twenty thousand a week or something. Yeah, he's sliding. They're, they're sliding this. Put, put that in your pocket. And you can put the clip on. Okay. Or put it on your belt with the clip. Okay. That way it won't fall. And we'll pull this up. Put this here. Like that. Oh, it's like that. No, it's like this. <laughs> Yeah, so a, a simple, uh, what's that uh, Shakespeare shit? Much, what started off as much to do about nothing. It was a lot, it was a big deal. It turned into a, and we products of our environment, to be honest. I ain't even thinking, no, both of us is like. It's just regular. It was regular and it gave us a chance to just live like we was used to living again. Not that the way we was living was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it just, we just. It gave us it went money. Back to childhood it went back to childhood days. So oh, money had no meaning. With money, right? Eddie, big man, cut in to Eddie Jr. Basically, asked him. So uh, let me ask you a question. Who been moving all that dope that uh, church has been giving you? Like, er, uh -uh. because the, the but it's all come out now. It's all come out now. You know, he, Eddie and Church's father always had a conversation like, you know, Church was gonna ask Eddie's father, how'd you like, you know. Um, I just like that thing we were sending up there, the weed. Like, what you talking about? Where was we getting the weed from? And he was like, "What you mean, Eddie Jr.?" We, anyway, it all, yeah, it, 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 it all, it all unravels. So at least Eddie, Eddie Senior, just you know, he as real as they come, he basically just cutting Eddie Jr. It was like, so um, who been moving all that shit? Treacherous been giving you the last two years. And uh, Eddie Jr. was like, the, the gig is up. Probably like a half million dollars. Yeah, uh, the gig is up. I'm sitting like a church mouse, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Eddie Jr. like, to be honest, Pops, it's them niggas off Dexter been moving it. And to be honest, them niggas has been begging me for some action. And the old man was like, well, if they want some action, we give them some action. They are, cause he like, they already working for us. What the, but we can do the shit right now. Right? So, now already, let me, let me back up a little bit on, on this, for the Spencer thing, right? So even before all this starts to unwind, Eddie old man it, it was working with a guy by the name of Richard Wakefield, street named the Penguin. When he came home, they already had this move coming out of um, Thailand. They was getting that China white, you know, uh, the shit was 90% pure. So they getting big money day he come home. Plus he was coming home and he already had money 
from from the glory days, and then they come home and they getting the bag is already right. So I mean, like, I think the first day he got home, when that first week he done bought Eddie a new Trans Am T top, uh, the sister Patricia bought her a new car, bought the wife a new car, bought him a run around car. So he done bought like this all happening. So four, four or five days. Four or five days. Eddie Jr. riding around, he you know, it was nothing. He'd come by and pick me up in his new whip. He do he he was collecting the money for his old man. Uh, no, well he was collecting once he started fucking with Pep and them in the end, but his old man already tearing them off. It was nothing for this period for him to have twenty five to eighty thousand dollars in the back seat of his car. So he going back to the old neighborhood, being young and being kids, being kids. Like, didn't I tell y'all when my daddy came home how I was going to be laying kind of thing? Spencer's seeing all this. So that was the first. Is still your neighbor? We have moved. We've moved from Southfield now. Everybody's moved from Southfield. Spencer's still in Southfield. Eddie and Oak Park and them, we off out of drive by now. Um, so Eddie, Eddie Jr. living a very good life, showing the world that he living a very good life. Chains, watches, cars. Ridiculous sums of cash. As all this is starting to unfold again now, once Eddie O'Man then cut into him, who been moving this shit Treasure's been giving you? Eddie Jr. like, it's them niggas off Dexter. The old man say they want some action. Eddie Jr. say, yeah, they niggas is actually begging for some action. Well, let's give them some action. Um, Eddie cut into Tracy, who already was knew what time it was. Tracy, by this time, um, I think Pep, well, WW obviously was definitely dead. Pep is doing what Pep is doing. Um, so anyway, they introduced, that's where, the, that's where, that's what leads to the introduction of, um, that's what leads to the introduction where Pep meets Eddie Jackson Sr. Um, Tracy, Eddie Jr. was the conduit for that, right? Shit, man. They give Pep, I believe, um, he talks about it in his book, and I know it to be factual. Um, they gave him 50 quarters to start off with. Pep tells Eddie O'Man, I'm going to take this uh, up to Boston. You all right with that? Eddie O'Man actually like, I don't care what you do with it. Just bring me my bread when you're done. Pep took the shit to Boston, ran through that shit like in a week, two weeks. It was a very short period of time. Came back. Paid the big man his money. Next time they re-up him, Pep like, I, ain't got, I, I don't need to go back to Boston. This shit will work here. here. That was it. When, he put, when they put that down on Narden, they was running, they, they was, his main thing, they was running out of Narden. Oh, Narden the, Park. Narden Park, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like the headquarters for him, man. Shit. Started off 10 a day, then 15 a day, 20 a day. Very quickly, Pep grew that business to about a $50,000 a day hookup. And so every day, Eddie is coming to pick up $50,000 from Pep. Half the time, I'm driving him over to pick up the money or just riding with him as he does pick up the money, right? So now, it don't take long. The, street, the word on the block is Pep getting the bag from Eddie Ju from Eddie Senior. The the problem with Pep and Butch is already still there. They think it's shooting at him all the time. He's shooting at them. It's chaos, for real, for real. So he's working that much dope plus his hits out on him. Plus, yeah, he got all in the same neighborhood. All in the same they neighborhood. Like they hide now. No, I mean you know how far many streets is it from Richton to Leslie? Walking distance. Walking distance. Walk. At at best. At best, this is all happening. Um, it was a lot of tension. It was a lot of tension in the neighborhood. It was a lot of tension in the neighborhood. So now, when Eddie is coming through for real, for real, he balling ridiculous. You know, he picking up fifty thousand dollars on a regular basis every day. He young, you know. Before he go turn in the money, he riding with them anyway. He did have free reign to do with the dough, pretty much what he wanted to do with it. Butchering them is. Catching blues, uh, cause they about they about they might have if they ain't got indicted yet they they about to get indicted. 
we here to shout out to Chucky e. Hinton, shout out, shout out to Mark Hinton, some other guys that all grew up with me and Eddie and Spencer. That supposedly, this is where you guys have seen Eddie Jr. on um, his channel. I don't have to tell you how um, he gets when these people, which na when their names come up. Well, a lot of that anger and resentment comes because through our friends, it was told to him that they, Butch or some people in his circle, so I'm going to tell you what I know and what I don't know. I, I, it was never clear whether this rumor came direct, but supposedly directly from him. Keyword supposedly, but it is a lot to it because I don't think these guys would have just made this shit up. That was a conversation that went half sideways or something like Eddie Jr. when he coming out there to Southfield to do this, that, and the third and he's showing off all that money. It was people trying to encourage Spencer to arrange a kidnapping of Eddie Jr. So now fast forward 30 years later, you know, that obviously caused for a severe breach. You know, Did you know it? we didn't know it at the time. So what we knew at the time was I think when Eddie O'Malley well, got that the kidnapping plan was afoot, but you didn't know they were trying to get Spencer to be part of it. The first rumor was just of the kidnapping plot later after we really stopped spending time with Spencer, because when Eddie Old Man had bought that new vet, that red vet, um, we drove out to Spencer's house, and his mom came out, and she was like, Ms. Holloway was like, you know, great woman, um, nice car, nice car. And um, I say, I'll sit here in the old neighborhood. It told you two to go take a ride for a minute, and Spencer didn't want to get in the car and ride with him. And that was like, for me, that, that was kind of really weird. And his mom, because his mom's even encouraged him, like, go ahead, have some fun with your, she was actually trying to pull, it. go, because she was like, go have some fun with your old friends. Because she was why she knew, you know, and again, hindsight's 2020. If he'd been fucking with us, he wouldn't, this, if he'd have went the other way, it, <laughs> what we wanted for him was different than what those guys wanted for him. They would buy a lot of violence. Yeah, and. And we, they got a lot of money, too. They got a lot of money, but. We knew, you know, that shit don't lead to nothing. The game, this, this thing is about, more like this. Yeah, this thing's about, always has been, it's about the bag. You know what I mean? Fight, violence is not good for business. And they never, they was too young and dumb, to be honest, to so understand. So did you talk about this with Spencer when you saw him a couple years ago? Yeah, and that's when he, and me and Eddie went to see him together. You know, so that's a message to all you young fellas out there, nephews and dogs. You know, it, it's nice to live long enough to reconcile some shit and get old enough to be like, oh, we was all, for everybody to be able to say, we was all young and dumb. We was all young, dumb, a lot of money, a lot of testosterone, a lot of shit was said that now looking and back. Even adults manipulating. Especially on his side. A lot of people. Bad adults. Bad adults with no good intentions who didn't know too much they got damn self, you know, was, you know, half bully thugs who called themselves dope dealers. But Hitmen turned drug dealer. Hitmen turned dope dealer, bully turned dope dealer, you know, whatever, you know, so it is what it is. But yeah, so he was like, that's why I stopped fucking with y'all was because it was people in my ear, in my clique, in his clique, suggesting me do some shit that I wasn't gonna be, but what wasn't, which we in our we never put ourselves in his suit. What if I'm riding around with you, Courtney Jr., everybody know you Eddie's man. My man beefing with your man, man, that shit ain't gonna work because especially in the, they click. Damn straight if I'm riding around with you, Eddie Jr., what the fuck? How that work? My boss got a hit out on your partner. I'm supposed to How's that how that how that work? Right? My boss literally has a hit out on your partner. And wants to kidnap you. And is supposedly got me and want to kidnap you. And, you know, even though I think it was a lot of talk. Because there's been too many repercussions. Eddie old man wasn't for none of that shit. Anybody and everybody who knows that man, his rep, yeah, that man ain't made means and run around the streets being a victim. Being a victim. And, 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 and ran this town for 10 years because niggas thought they could fuck with him. You don't live like he lived and behave like he behaved 
unless it's not a un, unless people really know you fuck with that man you got it the repercussions are going to be serious and let's be blunt ain't like none of them would have been hard for that man to get to I ain't saying they were scared of him or this, but I'm saying but you, you got you kidnap Eddie Jr. You will he would have unleashed the gates of hell. It would have been the quote Biggie. It would have been a lot of slow singing and flower bringing all over the city of Detroit for real, for real. And anybody knew that. And if he, anybody who would have heard it been to then would have said, "Don't do that, man. You got to be nuts." Unless you're willing to go to DefCon Four. For real, for real, and move your mama and yeah, everybody yeah, out of yeah, Detroit. You, grab you grabbed that. You grabbed that man, kid. Everybody, everybody and all, was in play. You, yeah, you, your mama. You, everybody ain't gonna just be able to go to bed at night. Nah. <laughs> nah. You go, okay. Eddie Jackson Jr. is being held around hostage, and you think your family just can go to sleep at night? Oh, by the way, he's sitting on a few M's at the time. And is well connected from the fucking Gambinos to fucking the borders of Mexico. Yeah, right. Yeah, for real. You know, it would have went from some neighborhood shit. That shit would have the, the repercussions no would, I. wouldn't. Yeah. So I, you know, I don't. But but the fact that somebody was even that the fact that even conversation like that could have been had was disturbing. Um, and again, you know, once, you know, years later when we was able to speak that, you know, uh, shout out to again to Spencer, you know, that he, and it makes sense. He was like, hey, that's why I had to distance myself from you guys, right? Um, and then as we would know, things would go really south with him, with that situation. Um, but I hear some hope. We hear some hope. He's got some things going. A lot of people are recanning the way his whole trial and, and, and thing went was... Um, He's, he's closer to 40 years than 30 at this point. He's closer. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. 2025 would be 40 I years. I mean, again, and I said it before on the original interview, it ain't like whatever happened, it wasn't no nuns or little old ladies involved. This was some street. And he was 18, 19. 18. It was some street shit. So he's approaching 40 years in. Yeah. Again, and no, everybody else on the case has come home. But some people did, didn't, go in the first didn't place. even go in the first place. We won't even go into all of that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, man, that was, that, was, that was a crazy summer. Summer 82, summer 83. It, it was weird. Uh, getting the only blessing out of it. This, this whole thing with all this YouTube, your station, my station. It, it gave a chance for uh, me, Eddie, and Spencer to kind of reconnect. So we wish the brother well. Hope he, for real, for real, the free Spencer Holloway.